Hey guys, welcome back to Phantom Sage Powers, where we discuss comics, heroes, villains, and the Crucible. What is the Crucible, you may ask? Stick around to find out. <sighs> Rise and shine, kiddo. It's another day in paradise. I don't know what the problem is, but I just cannot get a good night's rest here. Do we have any of that coffee that green kid is fa- What's wrong? Melody, we... We've got some... Word came down from the council, sis. It's time. Crucible. If you want it. When? Today. By combining their mutant powers, the five have given the X-Men and the Krakoan people the miraculous opportunity to be reborn after death. But nothing so incredible comes without a cost. Couldn't sleep? Never do. It's all that hair. Too hot for covers. And it's too cool without them. Can we just sit here like men, drink our coffee, and enjoy a quiet moment for once? I guess. But here's the thing that, what did I just say? Jean and I are taking the kids to Chandelure in a few days. And we were wondering if you wanted to come along. I know that's normally not your idea of fun, but it might be nice. The scenery at that place is something else. It sure is. Genie in a bikini, Scott in a Speedo. <laughs> well, who could say no to that? Great. So, Crucible is today. Yes, it is. Are you going? No. No, I am not. You think it's wrong. Didn't say that. Even if I felt that way, it ain't our choice to make, is it? Logan, that feels like a cop-out. Call it whatever you want, but I don't sit on the council, and neither do you. They had a choice to make, and they did. Now, we all have to live with it, whether we like it or not. Again, if the kid wants it, then who are we to say no? You and I have never had a problem making judgment calls in the past or deciding what's right and what's wrong. Not sure that's something we should hang our hat on, Slim. Look, there's no getting around the fact that we have a way to deal with this particular problem. There's no avoiding it. But do I love the choice? No. But if you were looking for some absolution or some kind of answer from on high, you're talking to the wrong guy. Go find a priest. That's a great idea. Hello, Douglas. Uh, hi. Did I just... I guess not. Seen Kurt around? Uh, he's usually up in his perch this time of day. Just follow the path up. Keep turning left. That's some view. It is, isn't it? You see that building there. In the distance. The tall one. The Fork Towers. Hard to miss. What's really interesting about it is that even though we know it's hollow, there's no way inside. Logan told me someone tried to cut their way in, 
It was him. It was him. Yeah, of course. Anyway, he couldn't get in. It just immediately sealed back up. So, no one's been in there. I have. Is that so? Yes. Curiosity got the best of me. So, I went in. Leap of faith and all that. Well, what did you find? I'm not sure. When I was younger, if I were designing a place to live that was everything that I wanted, that building would have been it. I would have called it home, I think. It's perfect, Scott. Like everything here. Like the island made it just for me. Doesn't that make the hair on your arm stand up? I learned years ago not to look for cracks in the firmament, Kurt. Enjoy what little joy we find, for soon the world will be the world, and we have lived in it long enough to know better. Ah. In the land of blind faith, the one-eyed man is king. Hmm. Fair enough. So why are you up here, instead of in there? Here, I can breathe. Here, I can think. Which is good, because Krokoa asks hard questions of me. Every day there's some new, amazing something to believe in. And all it costs is the suspension of everything I knew, everything I used to believe. Speaking of, Crucible is today. Which is exactly why I came to see you. You're struggling, Vissy. Yes. Aren't you? How could I not? Are we really going to just sit around and watch a mutant die? Great things are happening all around you, children. Great and wonderful things that lift us mutants up. And you might wonder, how high, Exodus? How high? Well, now we know. Higher than ever. Higher than ever believed possible. I look at all your beautiful faces, and they fill me with hope for today and tomorrow and in the ages to come. Which of you glorious children can tell me what is happening tonight? Crucible? Our first crucible. Which is what we named this glorious thing. But can you tell me what crucible actually is? I think it's where a broken mutant has to die so they can be an unbroken mutant. Is that right? Your answer has a ring of truth to it, but not the whole truth. Would you like to hear the whole truth? I think so. Yes. Then listen closely, children. But this is the truth. It is a story of a woman. A woman. Her name was Scarlet Witch. Pretender. Pretender! Stop, stop! Pretender! We don't say her name! Pretender! Pretender. Of course you know her. We all know her. Her and her great sin. She erased the powers of one million mutants. She made mutant into man. She made so many of us less. She spoke the words. No more mutants. No more mutants. No more mutants. And sent its one million of us to hell on earth, trapped in a body that was a prison. Can you imagine being able to do such wonders and then your gift stolen from you? And why? Because she thought it was the right thing to do? Because she knew what was best? That's what they do, the worst of them. They decide what is right for all of us, how to talk, how to think, what to believe. But what do we say to them? What do we say to her? 
No more. No more. No more. The great gift of the five means that any of us can be reborn. That we can be made whole. All that's required is one thing. And what is that, children? You have to die. That's right. But not just any death. Crucible is a word that brings to mind a lot of things, specifically the play by Arthur Miller. This play is a fictional story set in the historical events of the Salem Witch Trials. And it was about a community in Salem, Massachusetts that was gripped by paranoia and fear and religious fervor. A lot of the themes that were explored in that play really reflect in this issue as well. Themes like judgment and social status and criticism of authority, ideology and its danger, honor, integrity, martyrdom is a very big one, community versus the individual, naming names, sin and guilt, sense of self, and of course the supernatural. So how did you come up with the rules for the mutants who have lost their powers? Jean didn't tell you. We've both been busy, and I keep forgetting to ask. And Emma? I'm afraid to ask her because of what the answer might be. You are a wiser man than most, my friend. So, as you might imagine, many of us are finding the world of late a place of increasing complications. Krakoa is causing us to confront difficulties, problems, questions we have never faced before. Now is it more difficult for me because many of these questions lie at the heart of my religion? Perhaps. Perhaps not. But I believe that we are all finding them difficult in our own way. It's just that my perspective comes more from a place of the soul than the consideration others on the council might have. Like today, for example. Yes, today and the not-so-small matter of Crucible. I remember when Zorn taught me the Zen Koan. When I do violence to others, I do violence to the world. And when I do violence to the world, I do violence and to myself. Well, the inverse of that is also true. Violence unto yourself is violence to the world, and therefore violence to those around you. For me, these acts have both an external and eternal cost. And to leave the Buddhism behind and return to the bosom of Christ's church, why they are sins. Of course, my perspective, impassioned as it was, lack the pragmatic strength of some other arguments. After all, if one million depowered mutants decided to kill themselves tomorrow so they could be reborn in mutant glory, well, that represents a very real and practical problem for the Five. So that's how the Council landed on Crucible. You're telling me in Paradise the pragmatists have won? No. There was another argument made. Humans. What can we say about humans? That they have not already said about themselves. They cover the truth with lies. But their actions? Their God-forsaken actions always reveal who they really are. Oh, how they hate us. Oh, how they fear us. Oh, how they envy us. Look around you, child. Are you filled with envy? Yes. What's your name? 
Arrow. No. Arrow is a mutant name. I see no mutant standing before me. Perhaps you were born a mutant. But the human stole that from you. And now, in all the ways that matter, you are as they are. Arch. Yes. Then tell me your name. Melody Gunthry. Gunthry. A powerful mutant family. A great name. What a disappointment you must be. This is too much. I'm going to knock his... No, wait. Give it a minute. This is what she wants. Can you stand the disappointment? Can you abide what they did to you? No. Look around you. Look closely. These are people willing to fight to the very last one to preserve our way of life. To fight and die for one another. And this is why we do not accept those like you simply killing yourself to be reborn as something better. It's a surrender. And those days are beyond our people. Do you understand? Yes. So, what do you want, Melody Gunthry? Why are you here? To fight and die for my people, like a mutant. Then pick up your sword. The problem with all of this, Scott, all of it, is that it feels a little reckless, doesn't it? It's true, we have the laws in the foundation of some kind of government. But what was it built on? Hope? Anger? Inevitability? Arrogance? What is at the real center of it? I take it you have some opinions. That's the thing, my friend. I really don't. All I have are more questions. Consider my faith. I can't help but wonder what happens to our souls when we die. Do they linger, waiting for eternity, or do they return to their mortal vessels when that vessel is reborn? As you and I recently were, am I really me? Are you really you? Gotta be honest, this is the first time I've felt like myself in years, Kurt. If this is wrong, I don't want to be right. I understand that. Still, questions. Yes. Think about it. Mortality. If one cannot die, if one is immortal, then what lore is eternity? Why seek heaven? If we can, for all time, do God's good work here in the living world. Is our true cross now the burden of creating heaven on earth? Such questions. I could continue for days, but consider the small cracks already spidering throughout the foundation of the society we're building. You've heard about the Vils. Yes. And? It's going to be a problem. I agree, but some might say it isn't, especially after witnessing Crucible. You can live like this, like a human. It's an existence of a sort. There's nothing wrong with it. We can make the pain stop. Your wounds can be healed. We have mutants that can make you whole. All you have to do is quit. Just lie there and don't get up. Go to hell. Good. Good. If Vaughn is changed, made whole, and being reborn, then why shouldn't other mutants have the same opportunity in death? Why shouldn't they be able to be the very best version of themselves? Or perhaps even a better version? They should, I think. The problem is that some are arguing the best version of themselves would be being reborn and a copy of Magneto's body with his powers. I've already seen that written in someone's will. But why stop there? Why not combine two? Why not add a third into the mix? Yeah, like I said, it's going to be a problem. Uh. 
I... 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 You're what? Going to die like that? On your knees? Never. Melody. Uh, uh, uh. Melody. I see you, sister. We all do. Accept this gift. You have earned it. <gasps> Welcome back. On your feet, child. Krakoa is waiting for you. How do you explain something like this? How do you accurately describe it? Miraculous. Glorious. Wrong? All I know is you've convinced me. You're right. You do have questions. Yes, the only thing I am sure of is this. Any answers I find, I do not think they are for me alone. They are for all of us. I, I'm back. I'm whole. Thank you. I deserve no credit for revealing what was always there. What victory there is, is yours and yours alone. All that's left for you to do is claim it. Still, thank you. You're welcome, child. Now, what are you waiting for? Show them who you really are. Right or wrong, it sure is something, isn't it? Yes. Yes, it is. Scott. Yeah. I think I need to start a mutant religion. Such an amazing issue. Probably one of my favorites so far of the Dawn of X series. This issue really impressed me because it tackled a criticism of the whole premise of the Krakoan Age of X-Men that a lot of people were presenting and throwing out on the internet before even having really read the series at all, which was if they are just dying and resurrecting people, that's a cop out and that's cheap or it's just too much of a deus ex machina. Some people would say, well, that's not really them because once you die, your soul, if it's not a magical thing or whatnot, or they're just a bunch of clones and plant clones or whatnot. And in this issue, that very criticism is really the main impetus and the driving force of the narrative presented through the eyes first by Cyclops and then even more deeply by Nightcrawler, which makes a lot of sense that this person, this character would be the pioneer of this school of thought and asking these types of questions because Kurt is well known to be a very devout Catholic. So I thought that this was brilliant and cut right to the quick. And at the same time, it introduced this barbaric ritual, this very archaic, almost ritual sacrifice in a way that would allow a mutant who was depowered, which there are many out there, to be, to earn back what was stolen from them, actually. And that's where I have a really big problem, too, 
is that it's not like they gave away their gifts and their powers and now they have to pay a price to get it back. They were taken and it was random. As far as we know, it was random. So for other people or other mutants to say, are you worthy and you need to prove your worth to get your powers back and be resurrected? I have a problem with that. That bothers me anyway. And it's just like so, so brutal and so barbaric. And why does it have to hurt? You know, it's like, I have a problem with that. In one panel you see right before Apocalypse is about to end Melody's life, you see Magneto and Charles sitting and it looks as if to me, and I would like to imagine this, it makes me feel better, that Charles shut her brain down before Apocalypse killed her. Um, it looked like he was doing something with his powers. That's what it looked like to me. And I didn't notice it the first time I read it. But as I was going back over it, I was like, I wonder what he's doing. And I would think, I would hope that he would be trying to comfort her, put her down peacefully. I think that's what he did. Nobody wants to see a child suffer. That was just a lot, you know? But she was brave and you can't take that from her either because she chose to do it. She stepped up and she was about it, about it. I mean, no shade, Melody Guthrie is badass. She was badass back then. She was badass back when she had her powers back in, um, what was it, New X-Men? You know, I remember when she lost her powers, she almost killed herself trying to fly and she just had to try to prove to everybody, no, I still have my powers. But so now after all this time, she's been made whole. Sam and Paige being there as her brother and sister, how differently they both reacted to this whole ritual and this whole ceremony was really well written. Sam, of course, is going to protect his little sister. Paige understood her sister. This is what she wanted. This is what she was asking for. You can't take that from her. It did make me feel a sense of pride too at the same time of me feeling uneasy and uncomfortable. Really well done and I think that is the hallmark of any great writing is to invoke and elicit really strong emotions, even if they're in conflict with one another. So well done, yeah. So what do you all think? I wanna know, do you all feel like Crucible as a way to incentivize these depowered mutants not to kill themselves for one, because even though they would probably still resurrect them eventually, whenever they got around to it, I guess, but this is an incentive to put you at the top of the list and you're going to be in the next batch of eggs I guess so what do you all think about this and what do you think about Kurt's questions about the soul let me know in the comments below if you like this episode please give me that thumbs up and I will catch you in the next issue